Welcome back here to MLK Day and why we are here. So just days before Dr. King's death, we are told he spent some time in Bimini. Uh, the civil rights icon uh, was there to write what would have been uh, his final speech there. And he was impacted by the words, the fisherman was, by the legendary civil rights icon that he met during his trip. Let's take a look. From Captain Ansel Sanders, the legend from Bimini. Ansel Saunders was recently in Fort Lauderdale receiving an honor from the International Game Fish Association. Dr. Uh, King was there twice, uh, officially, but he was there many times. Back in Bimini, Bahamas, Saunders is a bone fishing legend and now a retired fishing guide whose most famous client was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He told me, he said, you know, Ansel, I don't think I'll make uh, 40 years old. And he died at 39. It was a rich life, but it was very short. Days before his final march in Memphis for striking sanitation workers, Dr. King was in Bimini, where Saunders says the civil rights legend would often come to write. We didn't have time to fish. He just wanted to write at that time. He came to Bimini, see, Bimini is so peaceful. Dr. King found a quiet place in Bimini's Bonefish Creek in 1968, Saunders says, to write the words of his final and famous mountaintop speech. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The next day, actually, he was dead. He just left Bimini four days before that. With a high-powered rifle that killed him. Yeah, he didn't suffer, but he, we suffered for him. Saunders says what he'll always remember is King's reaction to a psalm he wrote and delivered to the Atlanta preacher for several minutes on his boat. But only God can create a mustard tree. Only God can give life to you and me. Amen. He said, Ansel, you made me feel so close to heaven. I feel as though I could almost reach out too and touch the face of God. And touch the face of God. Now, Saunders says he also took Dr. King to another perfectly peaceful place to write uh, his Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech. And of course, that was in 1964.